the best time. Might not look like Christmas, but it's Christmas around here. Our next guest is the celebrity chef, a television personality, and the man behind the Crack Shack. And today he's preparing us a delicious Christmas turkey. I can't say that without laughing, the Crack Shack. A delicious turkey and biscuits, perfect for Christmas. Please welcome back to our home, Mr. Richard Blaze. We're so excited to have you here. Excited to be here. We always wow. eat so well. You too. Your stuff at the Crack Shack is well, second to it, none. It, it is. It's really Listen, delicious. A crack as in eggs and chicken, it's but we're having so a lot good. of fun opening up in L.A. in uh, uh, a week here, so we're very excited. We're so happy for that. And you know, it's word spreads fast. Your good friend Duff Goldman decided he needed to stay here for this, as did Santa Claus. Yes. Because yes. we yeah. have not eaten enough. <laughs> My so brother from eat. another mother. This is, is that true. what they say? Yes. We're actually going to team up a little bit later and the, do something else for the us. The romance is real. But yes. right now, we are making, it's a twist on a classic turkey. It's a deep fried turkey. It is. I feel like everyone wants to deep fry a turkey, but, but sometimes scared. it can be a little bit of in yeah. intimidating. Uh, uh, so we're getting ready to sort of walk people through the process because it ends up being the easiest, most delicious way to prepare your bird. You just need to know how to do it. And you have to be safe about it. So if any of you at home are considering actually deep frying a turkey, there's certain precautions that you should take that we want to point out. You should always have a fire extinguisher on hand. That's very important just in case. You're going to need a Type K extinguisher, which is the kind that's rated for grease fires. It's different than the other ones. So make sure yours is Type K. Also, you see where our king cooker is? Well, you want to place that on a piece of giant card board because in case it splatters the oil will splatter onto the cardboard and the cardboard will actually absorb it mm. and it's going to keep it, it it'll keep it from slipping on any um un, un uh, even surface so you don't want it to slip and tip over because boiling hot grease and oil is not good if it slips over and do not dress like Candace and I have dressed. <laughs> Whatever you do, you're gonna to wanna to have pants on, closed toe shoes, um, you're gonna to wanna to have gloves if you're gonna be handling the turkey coming out of the king cooker because you do not want any of that grease and oil to splatter on your body. It could cause third degree burns. And we have a little video that Richard, you're gonna walk us through to show us exactly how much oil needs to go in the cooker. Take a look at this. Exactly, so I mean, I think this is the most important part is figuring out how much oil to have. So the way you're gonna do that is by taking your bird, putting it in the empty king cooker, just like this, and then you're gonna pour water over your bird. You want that water to be maybe a few inches above the last part of the bird, and that's where you're gonna get your measurement. So it's sort of like, it's very DIY. You wanna measure twice and cut once. That's exactly. what they say in the DIY world? Exactly. Well, here you wanna measure the water out and then mark the side of your container with a little bit of marker right there, uh, and that will allow you to know how much oil you need to put in your pot. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So then we can do it safely, and I also appreciate the Star Wars music. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. That. Well, that's for me. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, so here's our bird. We've uh, brined it and dried it. What did you use in your brine? Yeah, so a brine basically is a combination of salt and sugar. So this is a very basic brine. It's bay leaves, it's salt, water, and brown sugar. We're going to get that sort of sweet, salty thing going. Most important part is when you're you're done brining, especially because we're going to fry this whole bird, is you really want to dry uh, the skin of the bird. Let it dry a little bit so that it doesn't sort of spit and splatter when you put it in the hot oil. Because if it's wet, it's going to splash back at you. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So this has been dried. Okay, so, so now we have this amazing contraption that we use for the king fryer. We do, which this is kind of, I, it, you know, I'm trying to figure out if we can actually use this for also clothes. We can, for my, or, or, for my daughter's clothes. Exactly. Yes. I have two young daughters as well. So Perfect. I think that this is, you know, when it's not the holidays, you can use this. The clothes uh, But this is going to be a hanger that we're going to insert here here on this contraption and now that's the bird holding the bird goes in right and now the bird's gonna go in so are you ready we're ready oh, all right so I'm gonna amazing. just walk it over here okay all right and as you can see yes. Richard has closed-toed shoes on he's wearing gloves I do I have an apron I have uh, the these are safety goggles yeah safety goggles I mean they're not but that Glasses, sounds good same thing uh, and then this is our oil so we have it set to um, 350 degrees and then just very very carefully what we're gonna do slowly is slowly oh, Drop this there bird into our oil, right? And again, that's you don't want it to splatter. There we go. There it goes slow. S starting to bubble. All right, and it's in its delicious wow. bath right now. This bird is taking a bath in this neutral flavored oil. It's gonna cook uh, for a little while in there, right? How so, long? Yeah, so we want this to basically come up to 350 degrees. Okay. Um, and then once it's up to that, it's about three minutes per pound okay. for your bird. Three minutes per pound. Roughly speaking, we're talking about 90 minutes. About 90 minutes total. Per bird, okay. Okay, so, so our bird has been going over here yes, now. Yes, our bird has been uh, cooking now for about 90 minutes. And now I'm just gonna sort of go catch our little. And then careful coming out our too. Our turkey hanger. You okay. wanna be careful when you're taking it out. 
out to drain a little bit of that oil and then very simply, this is like my, I caught the fish, this is the moment where it's like I want yeah, that picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it's just gonna come right over here to our, our, our shoe tray. <laughs> it's like catching a bluefin tuna. Wow. It's about the size of a small bluefin tuna. Yeah. <laughs> and then, all right, we're gonna bring this up here. Let's but see it's these. It's still bubbling under the sand. It is. Yeah. No, no, just, just leave it there. Gorgeous. We're gonna leave, leave it, it here? Okay. We have beautiful turkey I just don't here. wanna walk away from it. I'm just very we excited. Gorgeous okay. turkey here. The gloves now, are coming off, we're literally. Gonna, the gloves are gonna come off. I'm gonna build these. Now, you have to tell me about, I love these biscuits, by the way, but you have to tell me about the delicious miso maple butter that you have. Exactly. Here. Well, first of all, thank you so much for jumping in and being my sous chef. I really oh, appreciate of course, it. Of course. Uh, so this you miso, did all the hard work. miso maple butter is what we serve with our biscuits at Crack Shack. Um, and it, for me, there's something that's at holiday and biscuits just sort of go hand in hand. Yeah. I love this idea of miso, which is salty, playing with maple, which is sweet and also very reminiscent of the holidays. So it's just a great sauce, quite honestly, for just biscuits on their own, but certainly for this little turkey uh, and biscuit sandwich that we're making but right it's here. not just served at Crack Shack. It's really a signature. It is a people signature. People come from far and wide for this. Absolutely. And people come in and they're always like, you know what? Um, you know, I wish that the Duff Goldman did a recipe like this. What are some of your family's favorite holiday dishes? You know what? Okay, well, here's a, it's not a dish, but you know what I love to do? And I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I'm going to do it because it's home and family. Okay. I love to take our family's elf on the shelf. You've heard of this oh, thing. Oh, of course. Yes. And I'm really embarrassed. I like to make elaborate dining scenes with the elf on the shelf. <laughs> like the elf on the shelf went crazy and ate like a bunch of Duff's cakes last night and there's like wrappers and stuff all over the oh, place. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, I, yeah, I like to kind of get into that. I want to design dollhouse kitchens basically in a future oh, life. That's what I want to do. Your daughters would love that. I, I they would. How they adorable. Would. Yeah, <laughs> hey, tell us a yes. little bit about your oh. podcast. Yes. Oh, yes. Starving for, for attention. attention. Yes, which is just <laughs> appropriately named. That's um, funny. Basically, it's my wife and I, Jasmine, and we like to bring in people, mostly chefs like Duff, who's been on the podcast. I've been on. To Super talk fun. about things that are unrelated to food. So I want to know more about Duff Goldman being a bass player uh, yeah. and what he likes to do when he's not uh, baking delicious treats. Um, and the way the he proposed to his, to his fiance and all kinds of things like Such that. Such a romantic. Oh, Such a no. romantic. I know. Who would have thunk it? So maybe you could invite some of us on your show. I, well, the offer stands. Okay. Absolutely. Let's do We're it. In. Not, I'll just go in the shed over there and record from there. We can do a whole episode. <laughs> oh, my God. Is it good? Okay. I got to go. It's really good. Okay. For the full recipe, mm. visit Hall. Hallmark Channel.com.